Can you talk a little bit about your character in Prometheus? I really can't. Um, I'm not really allowed to. Um, obviously, what's been posted on the internet uh, is uh, is, a, is a sort of a, um, an opportunity for people to get a sense of uh, some of the philosophies and ideas behind the film Prometheus. It was a great TED talk. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, beyond that, I'm not really uh, able to talk about it at this stage. Do you have a partner called Utani? Well, we know that I'm playing Peter Whale, so you know, we know that there's a connection with Alien, with the original Alien film, well, in fact, all of the Alien films, I guess, um, even though I find it difficult to connect three and four with one and two. Um, uh, just personally, I think, well, in fact, I just think one is really the only one worth looking at. Um, well, you know, I, just think it's, I just think it's by far the best one, you know. Um, but I think to label Prometheus as just a sort of prequel to that is probably a little limited, you know, I think the ideas that Ridley uh, then developed through the creation of Prometheus kind of expanded and expanded and kind of took it outside the realm of being just a, just a prequel. Prometheus and this film is, are examples of what many, one of the many blockbusters that you've done. But you also... I haven't done many blockbusters at all. What are you talking I about? Know. <laughs> I, think, I don't know. There's that, that Oscar-nominated thing that you did. Um, but you go from films like this, which are big and will have big audiences, to very independent movies. And I wonder if to do something that has... What are what you're more comfortable in, doing something that's sort of new and, and with a new untested director or something that's sort of like... Like Prometheus, that's... Well, to, uh, I don't sort of cut the pie that way. The way mm. I look at it is it's about communication and honesty and creativity and inspiration and um, ideas, I suppose, and whether whether that comes about in a really low-budget independent movie with a first-time director or a massive sort of studio film with a highly established director doesn't actually matter to me, you know, mm. because really I'm just responding to... Uh, the feeling that I get when I read the story, you know, as such. So I'm aware that there is a difference, and I'm aware that from the outside there is a difference. Um, but that's never the driving force for me. And so what I feel most comfortable in, I mean, I, working on Prometheus, for example, with Ridley, you know, he, he, he um, he's able to make the, the world that we're in and the set that we're on feel intimate and connected mm -hmm. and sort of small and, and uh, like we've got time and you know you're, you're really able to get your ideas across and, and um, have great discussions with him without feeling like the sort of the monster of this, of this historic kind of franchise <laughs> yeah. is sitting there on your shoulders. You, you just forget all about that with Ridley. Um, and I can feel the same thing with a first time director. I mean I worked on a film that Drake Doremus um, has just done which doesn't have a title yet. Uh, and he's the guy who won Sundance last year with his film Like Crazy. Um, and, you know, very low budget, all improvised, um, but wonderfully communicative. And so, in a way, they feel exactly the same to me. Um, and I've worked on bigger films before that are just terrible because you don't have any real contact with anybody. You're sort of dealing with somebody's assistant's assistant, assistant. And, you know, so I just, I, I just feel at a loss in that sort of situation. But you can also feel like that on an independent movie, just because somebody's personality might mean that they would rather not have to deal with the actors, you know, directly. They'd rather have someone else tell you what it is their ideas are. And so if I don't feel like I'm communicating with the, with the head of the beast, I'm, I struggle. I always yes. wonder on a low budget movie, I mean not a low budget, a slow paced movie if the, the making of the film is done slow paced. This obviously is the other extreme. Was this a high, high energy set? Lockout. Lockout. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, we had fun though and it didn't actually feel too sort of um, too rushed or too massive. I mean, we, there were some days where we had to whip through it pretty quickly, but, uh, but not necessarily out of, out of the ordinary though. And the two directors, you know, Stephen and James, are two Irish guys, great senses of humour, and, you know, so they were up for a laugh, and and I think everyone generally had quite a nice time on it, quite a fun time. I don't know if they wanted to have a high-energy set in order to have a high-energy... No, show. I think they... 
I think they uh, are aware of what they can create in post-production as far as the rhythm and the energy of the and the sort of intensity of the of the world. I mean, there were some specific shots that we would be doing that you know that clearly you knew were going to be really dynamic, I, I guess. But generally, uh, you know, generally there was a sort of a serene. I mean, our first AD was a pretty calm guy, so I think it's often gauged by your first AD. So then from an actor perspective, just to piggyback on what you just said, then the budget really doesn't matter to you. It's all about the director and what type of set they run. Then. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the budget, you know, it, I, and I understand why people ask this all the time, because from the outside, mm -hmm. you know, there are those movies that go out on 3,000 screens and then there are those little platforms. Because it just seems like if you had $300 million to work with, you guys would kind of just laze about and, and you have like much to shoot versus an independent movie where it's like you gotta get out there you have like five days to shoot something no it just it's just you know it just completely depends on the people you're working with i think some people can you can be on a little movie with some people and they can make it seem like it's it's a big you know big 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 deal you know and sometimes there's more pressure on big budget movies because people are afraid of losing their 300 million million dollars and so they can be a lot more tense than you know little independent films so what do you think about sending people to uh prison space. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, and a lot of things you can send up in space nerve, why send <laughs> criminals. It's a nerve wracking idea, isn't it, really? I mean I you know, we're all very aware of the, the prison system in this country and around the world and at home in Australia that it's it's not working. Um, that's no, how Australia was in Australia. <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> so you think we would you think we would uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> get it working. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think it's a sad prospect that, you know, do we eventually say, well, too many prisoners, not enough prisons, let's just start building them and shooting them off into orbit. I mean, it seems... It's a lot of positives, right? I mean, they mention them in the movie. There's no sexual abuse, there's no... Uh... Yeah, no but I mean, the there's not a lot of not a lot of therapeutic um, rehabilitation either, so... That's true. You know, I think and that's the main concern. What was the shoot actually, schedule on this? Uh, it was nearly three months. Yeah, it was basically October, November, December of 2010. And, and actually, if you put the prisoners to sleep for the for their entire for the duration of their entire sentence, what do they learn? Well, exactly. What do they learn? Yeah, I don't know. Did they just wake up what seems like a minute after they committed the crime? <laughs> Did I get away with that? That's pretty good. You know, off to do it again. You know, I mean, it's just a sad state of affairs, really. Would you mind terribly if I had a photograph before they dragged you away for the article? Not at all, not at all.